So appreciate you guys coming out today. Um, first, do want to recognize Coach Volpe winning Conference USA championship and, and her her team and the great effort they put forward all all year. And also, also Coach Para winning the tournament this weekend. Like that was a heck of a second half by all accounts last night. Uh, talking about our game last Saturday, you know when you're playing a a strong championship level team. Uh, the defending champs, your margin for error is small. And uh, unfortunately, we made way too many errors in all phases, uh, but we made them early in the game. Uh, and that was one of the things that I thought if we could have started out fast against this bunch and let our confidence grow a little, we would have had a chance. And uh, the way things went, the two turnovers by the offense in the in the first quarter uh, were really tough. They were tough to deal with. Uh, obviously, I thought our defense went out there and started fast. They get a three and out to start the game. Next drive, we hold them to, to third and four. And again, the guy that I think is conference player of the year makes an unbelievable off script play. And you watch Frank Harris go 56 yards down the sideline. Never in my life have I seen a sprint out to the right cut back uh, to the other sideline and, and score. But um, that's what championship level teams do. And when you have great players, they are able to do those things. So um, my hat's off to them. I thought UTSA played a great game. Uh, I thought they performed at an incredibly high level. And, you know, I look back at, at our offense and I, I see a group that got out physical. And uh, that's something that, that is hard to swallow because that's something we hang our hat on. Defensively, we missed a couple fits. And every time we did something wrong, they made us pay in a big way. And uh, so, again, that's what happens. The small errors add up to a big sum as four quarters of football goes on. And that's what we saw on Saturday. But, you know, we've talked this week. I've reminded these guys that, we are a good football team, and I think that's what's important for them to understand is when we've come out and we've protected the football and we've played good football, we've competed with everybody in this conference or found a way to win those games. And I think you see that all across Conference USA right now. When people play well, you have good contested games that go down to the wire. And when one team plays sloppy, uh, they get both raced, and it seems to be happening to all the teams in this conference on a weekly basis. So we, we've got to play solid football. we got to play our kind of football. And we got to remember that we are a talented group of football players coached by good coaches uh, that combine to make a good football team. And that's what we need to go show this weekend. And so that has been the mantra of how we get these guys in a headspace to do that. And we know it's going to start and end with work and, and the process that we go through every week. And I am incredibly proud of these guys, how they've worked week to week, the way that they prepare, the process they go through, I think has been at a really high level, and it's certainly different than what we've been able to do any uh, other year for a sustained season-long campaign. So I think the leadership of the team's been great. I think these guys still want the opportunity to go out there and win their sixth game and, and get bowl eligible. We know that North Texas has a lot on the line, too. If, if they win this game, they get a chance to play for the conference championship. You know, and, uh, But I don't, I don't know that that's any bigger for their program than, than winning six and going to a bowl is for us. So huge game against Seth Luttrell's bunch. Very talented team on the other sideline as well. Uh, that when they played well, they've had a chance to to really pull games away, and uh, you know. And then the conference USA thing happens too, where on times where they don't play as well or, or don't protect the ball, things happen, and, and that's football. So I think you're going to have a very good football game this Saturday. I think you're going to have two teams that have a lot on the table that want this game, want this win, that will be fighting really hard. And I think the people who make the least mistakes and uh, who play the hardest the longest, you know, some of those old cliche things will show themselves to be very true as we find the winner of this game on Saturday. But our football program is really excited. I'm really excited. I believe in every one of these guys. I'm so thankful for the way that they're coming to work. But uh, with that, I'll open up for any questions. What you like about AJ? Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, what I liked is the co confidence that he went into the game with. Nothing seemed too big. Uh, far from perfect. Uh, missed a couple throws. Uh, probably didn't have his eyes in the right place on a couple things, but I think that's really understandable for somebody who took scout team reps all week, you know, and wasn't part of the game plan, wasn't part of really the thought process. But what, when you ask what we liked about him, like we had AJ in camp, we got to put our hands on him. We know he's got a howitzer for an arm. He's also a guy that Reedy leaned on last year, you know, in 6A football to run the ball when he wasn't able to throw it. And, uh, Gosh, I mean, he went into a game where he couldn't lift up his arm and ran the ball and I think led them in, into the playoffs. And he was uh, he's a phenomenal team guy. He's a guy that I think is easy to, to follow on our team right now. And I think everybody's excited that he could get this opportunity. Game for you. Uh, talk about the turnover. What does it say 
about the room that the next guy up this point has been able to do. Yeah, I think that's that's an interesting point right there, Matt. But that is uh, that is why you recruit. You know, obviously, we all want to keep our, our starting quarterback and our starting everything at every position. Like, your starters are the starters because they're the best. And you want to keep them healthy and, and playing in 12 promised games and any other opportunity you're able to earn. But that's not college football. And so when you do have to go to the next man up or the next next man up, whatever the case may be, uh, that's why you recruit. And you better have people that you're bringing along and developing in your program. It's why I think it's so important on Fridays at home games that we have scrimmages or we have some seven-on-seven seven work that we put those guys back into our offense. It's why on the bye week we scrimmage the way we do because you never know. Everybody's either a play or two away. And here we are. Like, I have no idea what TJ will be able to do in practice today. So we're going to give AJ a bunch of reps. AJ will get a bunch of reps with the ones today, just like he did yesterday. And we'll see where this thing goes. You mentioned I think Saturday that last year you did make yourself take up you know, I wish I could tell you there was something magic that I saw that week at UAB to know it was going to happen. I just saw a team that came out and focused and prepared. And then we went and played a really good game. And I still, I guess that's what I would tell you the similarity is, the way we practiced yesterday. Like, there's so many teams that, yeah, I mentioned this to Nate on the radio show last night. Like, the ebbs and flow of college football are so much to deal with, right? Like, you have back-to-back -back losses. And that was our first time having back-to-back -back losses all year but you feel like you haven't won a game in forever. And that's just not the case, but that's how you feel uh, as a, whatever I am, 45 year old man. Like you can imagine what it is for 18 to 22 year olds that are dealing with social media. And that's why I thought it was important to remind them that they are a good football team. They're not the football team that's only played the last two games. They're a football team that has won some really big games this year that has come back and overcome things. And, and they're really talented. And we're a good football team. the thing that we're lacking is consistency i see a bunch of flashes like i see us fit the run nine times out of ten incredibly well where the ball's being stopped for two yards one yard tackles for loss but the one time we fit it badly and it goes for 60 that's something that's glaring right on a defense and that's what we're missing is 11 guys doing their job uh for 60 minutes and that's what we got to get back to and some of it you can say hey well we had an injury at this spot and yes, that's true, but like it's college football. We have to get the next guy ready to make a play. I do believe this too, Matt. Like I think these guys care so much. And so they're sitting there and they're like, oh my goodness, is he going to do his job? And you can't play that way because when you're trying to cover for somebody else and do his job too, you're doing half of two jobs crappy instead of doing your job really well. And so I think when we get to the point where we trust our teammates, we put our eyes in the right place and we do our job, on those 9 out of 10, it's really good. We got to get there where it's 10 out of 10. Offensively, I like to have protection errors uh, that we've had two weeks in a row are just unacceptable. Like those, so, so I'm not answering your question about what we're doing. Good, maybe, but I'm, I'm telling you what we're doing uh, poorly. Uh, you know, I thought against Western Kentucky, we ran the ball really well. Last week, there's no question. We didn't move them. We didn't create lanes for the back. We didn't do that well. So, you know, I'm, I'm sick of the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I'm sick of even thinking about it. I'm worried about going 1-0 and this week against North Texas and focusing on what we can do right now. So what are we doing well? We're working our butts off. That's what we're doing well. And these guys, I, I think, again, took the charge yesterday, went to practice the right way, and I certainly expect we'll do that today. The focus. So what do you say to your student Don't get there. It does because they're Rice students and because they're the top APR at a school like Rice where no class is easy. So, yeah, that does. But to be clear, like our focus is just like you said, it's to go one and oh this week. It's to to earn it. And, and yes, earning it at a place like Rice at five and seven. I guess that's still earning it. It's a step forward for this team. But I believe there's more in this team than being a five and seven team that goes to a bowl. I believe like if we're six and six and we have a chance to go have a winning season and win a bowl game, that's something that's really substantial. And that's really what I want to do for for the staff, for these kids. I think that's what we're all pushing for. We all believe that can happen and want that to happen.
Yeah, uh, so I think when you talk about them defensively, they've got uh, KD back. You know, he he entered the portal over the summer and, and chose to come back, and he's once again, I think, leading our conference tackles. He, he's a phenomenal player, uh, box player, but also will step out of the box and do some exceptional things, uh, running plays down. Uh, so I think he does a great job. You know, their their defensive line is a lot different than it was in the past. You know, a lot of their guys transferred out last year, but they've gotten some good transfers in. Uh, they brought in one of Quintet's teammates from a ACU, and he's doing a good job for them. They got another uh, kid that they brought in that's doing a great job at the, at the rush position. And they got DBs out there that seem to be in sync. So when you talk about them defensively, what they're doing well is they're not allowing many big plays. Like you see them. You know, I played Coach Bennett's defenses for years and watched him when he was at Baylor, played him when he was at Arizona State, and played him last year here. He used to be a big cover zero pressure team. And that used to be one of his his hallmarks. At Baylor, maybe not so much. Maybe, maybe this is probably more similar to how he was at Baylor, where there's a lot of cover for. They're not going to give you anything easy. They're going to make you earn it every step of the way. And so you may get a five-yard completion here or there, but it's hard to get the shots on them. And so I think that's what they're doing is keeping the ball in front and making people go the hard way. Offensively, they're a North Texas team that is committed to running the ball. And, you know, they also got a good passer and Austin Ani. I mean, he's doing a good job managing the offense. He doesn't run maybe as much as some of their quarterbacks have in the future, uh, but they do have a running quarterback they'll put in there. But I just look at, at what they're doing with those two backs. And again, like, I think, you know, you've read some stuff about where they are injury wise. and. They may not know who's going to play running back for them, just like we're not quite sure who's going to play quarterback for us. But they were a different team, a uh, different offense against UAB than they were the rest of the time with their top two backs up, you know, and, and that's life in the big city, you know. But I'm sure they'll put together a great plan with or without those two starting backs. And uh, like I said, it'll be a great challenge. And special teams-wise, they're, they're doing a great job all over the field. I think their kickoff return unit, number 41, how explosive he is and, what he's able to do, how they're trying to get him involved in the offense with reverses. They're doing some neat things with a very good athlete, number 41. Ooh, he has. That's what I'm saying, man. That kid coming back, he entered the portal, and I about threw a party. I'm sure Seth didn't. Uh, but, you know, having him back to lead their defense and to really captain that ship, uh, man, he's a player. He's a player. And he does make so many football plays. He's also their blitzer of choice. Like he's the guy that that comes and whether it's an offensive lineman or a back that takes him on, he does a good job with secondary pass rush moves. So he's going to be a great challenge for our guys. You know, I discuss him, older guy, but he's good and Yeah, you know, he's he's a little bit like Chris Winky when I was at Florida State. You know, played minor league baseball. I think Winky was twenty six or twenty seven when he came in. I believe Austin is twenty nine years old. And has a kid, right? Like, I mean, that's that's different than a lot of people on that football team, for sure. Um, he's got a lot of different things to worry about. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I want to make a joke about formula or anything like that, maybe keeping him up. But, uh, you know, we've all been there, those of us that have kids, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a different, unique challenge in itself. But it certainly probably keeps him from, from roaming the streets of Denton. And uh, I imagine he's a very mature kid. I've talked to Seth about him. Seth loves him and uh, thinks he's a great leader. So you see that. You see, you know, it's. At this point in his career, it's a little bit like Mason Fine in terms of the leadership ability and uh, how you see him rallying his teammates. Talk about injury leaders now. Uh, these three guys sitting next to us are, are two that have basically been here the whole time and had not been nicked up and you counted on to in big moments. Yeah, knock on wood, these are two dependable suckers right there. They really are. We need their best. All these guys that are, you know, I, I've said it for a long time, like football, college football is designed to be a junior, senior sport. And maybe that's changing a little with the portal and, and some of the, the stuff that we see in the landscape. But everybody should play their best football as a junior and senior. And these two have, have a couple of years of eligibility left. But, you know, I just think what they've done to affect games for us when they've been at their best has been tremendous this year. And we need their best in this game. And we need their voice. You know, Piercy's a captain. Jack's more of a silent killer. Uh, not going to hold rah rah a whole lot, but he just goes about his business and gets his job done. But both of those kids are guys we put up for all conference. And if you have a vote and if you've watched the film, you know they're both worthy of those all conference nods. So 
playing at a high level for the Rice Owls. Appreciate both of them, their leadership, their play, and their toughness. Anything else? All right, thank you all. How do you rally the guys? Captain, mm -hmm. the last game, when you focus on regrouping, how do you focus? We just focus on regrouping. Like I was thinking all weekend, really thinking that the guys is really finding that dog, really just watching what happened last year, really just finding that confidence that we play with, playing together, staying together. We know as a defense, we play our best defense when we're together and we believe in each other because we do. We just got to find that dog and do this next week. And then when it comes to the, the play of the defense as a whole, uh, a couple games where big points have gone up, but it hasn't hasn't quite felt like that things have gotten that that far away of you except for a, a couple plays. Is it that simple, cutting out the five or six big plays? How close do you have to are? Yeah, Coach Wynn talked about is really just being consistent. Like he said, like it would be plays where we do the job right, run good, run this, um, covering well, but then those few plays where everyone's not doing their job and it really is that simple just doing our job every play and like that's the expectation of this team that's the expectation on this defense to just do your job do your 111 and I think it really is that fixable because we have the right guys to do it I mean I know that we have the great great leadership on all position groups and all phases of the ball to get the job done we just we just got to bring everyone along with us I was you know, North Texas always have a good run game, always have good running backs, always have good athletes. I mean, even in the past game, good quarterback. But like we said, just being consistent with those run fits. You know, we got dogs in the front seven, um, especially in D line, linebackers that can that know how to do their job. And I'm confident that every one of those guys can get the job done. And we're prepared for that. We're coming in, um, simplifying things, knowing knowing where knowing where to be, um, knowing that guys are doing the right thing, trusting that guys are going to do the right thing. And once when we roll out on Saturday, we know what to expect. We know they're going, like you said, try to pound the rock. But we face teams that try to pound the rock, and we've been successful against teams that try to pound the rock. So I'm confident our guys can just get the job done. <laughs> Thank you. So also, what do, what do you guys have to do to really shut? I think you kind of on the nail with that. We get those takeaways. Like we're a defense that emphasizes getting the ball back to our offense, getting those takeaways and really making those game changing plays, especially on third down, getting off the field on third down, making those those momentum takers, make those plays that really help you win the game and I think that's really what it is. We got to stop the run, you know, make the plays that we're supposed to make. But when it comes down to those plays where talent takes over and beyond just doing your job, we got to make those plays too. We got to get the ball back to our offense. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I feel like we're a team that's battle tested. We're a team that's seen and been through and overcome adversity time after time. So this isn't a position that we're not used to being in. And I'm not worried about where any of the guys has that or anything, where the coaches has that. We've all, through this whole program, we've seen and been through adversity. So I think we're in a good spot mentally and a good spot um, physically. We got guys coming back. And um, we just got to keep doing what we always do, responding to adversity. I know the conditions were kind of wet, kind of really wet uh, this weekend. Uh, but you had uh, down to I guess the fourth and the fifth guy in the depth chart in the corner mm -hmm. a couple of starters had back out. Mm -hmm. What do you see from Miles Ford, Trish on his always to kind of step up with that big moment they had broke for all that big part? Exactly. I've I've been saying all year. Like, yeah, they have they have been playing much of the year, but Miles and Trady are great corners and like they're all guys that we depended on in the past, depending on just like I said, being healthy and like when they're on the field. I trust them just as much as anyone else in that corner room. So like there's there was no surprise about that that they they did their job and held it down over there. So I'm ex I'm excited for them. I'm excited to see what else they're they're gonna be able to do this next week. 
And I know they're both taking this opportunity well, and I know they're both working hard to get the job done like they did this last week. You'll see this as a big rivalry in the last two Texas teams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, we play, like, since I've been here, we've always played them, always been a good game, always been a, a battle game up in the trenches, especially, and, you know, and, and in the past game. So, yeah, you can't see how the rivalry, but it really just like any week, we, we suit up to win every week. We suit up to compete every week, no matter who, no matter what jersey they have on, like, we're going to come to play no matter who it is. Six. Really, no Texas like like you, like Coach Lewis to it, like that quarterback with experience, older quarterback, been been growing as over the years. They got a good defense, good running game, unique running game. They're gonna hit you with different stuff in the pool, different gap schemes and everything. And um, really, what's different with them is like they have like they they play tough up front. They do play tough up front, but like we, like you said, we play teams like that. We played a lot of teams like conference that have that same mentality. We have that mentality because we know that we're going to give it to you up front as well. Is that we're going to come with that same intensity and pass that intensity. And like, that's, that's our expectation as a defense. That's our expectation on all phases of the ball. So they're different in the way that they, the way they play their game, the way the aggressive, the way they play their game. But I think we're easily capable of matching, surpassing that. All right, thank you. Yeah. What's it like going back close to home? Yeah, you know, it's it's always fun just going back up the uh, north part of the state. So I know uh, a lot of my family will be there, which will be nice for sure. Coach called you a uh, quiet killer. <laughs> how would how would you characterize that? Yeah, I think it's uh it's definitely fair to say, you know, I'm uh more of a kind of handle my own business, you know. I don't always, you know, have the rah rah, you know, speaking out, uh yelling at guys a lot. Um I think it's you know, I, I like to say that, you know, I kind of lead by example, you know, I handle my business, do it do what's uh, expected of me. Uh, you know, try to do it to my to the best of my ability. Uh, so, you know, there's definitely some strengths in that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people will say that about me. I think that's fair to say. When you go about maybe looking at the offense the past couple of weeks, uh, what, what's been kind of uh, your diagnosis of where you have been? Yeah, so uh, I think Bloom covered it uh, earlier. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, guys are overcomplicating their job. You know, there's there's times where, you know, even myself, you know, you're not really sure, okay, you know, I care too much. Are they going to do their job? And, you know, that's that's where you really get to hone in. You kind of focus on, okay, this is my job and this is how I can do it to the best of my ability. And so I think offensively, if everyone, you know, really locks into that and really just focuses, all right, I'm going to do my job, you know, I'm going to do it the best that I can, you know, it's, it's where we're the most successful. And I think that's something, you know, we've struggled with in the past and uh, really we should focus on really get guys to, you know, do their one eleven like, like we say, and do their job to the best of their ability. You know, I have to do that thing like the money game last week, kind of stopped that. Everybody kind of did their piece and did community. But yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I think especially in the run game, you know, our coaches do a great job. You know, they give us a great game plan as far as, you know, run schemes that will, you know, get these defenses uh, moving around, not really sure what to do. And so all that comes down to is, you know, we each have our own job. And when we can do that, and we can, you know, run the ball. It's, I mean, we're a really successful football team. So I think that's definitely something we can do. Coach mentioned their defense. Get piggy dang something. Come on, what else? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, KD is a great player, obviously going against him the past couple of years. You know, he's a solid linebacker. And, you know, I look forward to the matchup again. Um, you know, their front is definitely a lot of different guys. So it's it's really going to be about, you know, our preparation this week, you know, watching film, you know, what, what are these guys' tendencies? Um, you know, we haven't played against them. Um, and so really just looking at that film and making sure, you know, we're ready for these new transfers that they have up front and, 
you know, guys that we're going to be going against play after play. Let's go back and look at the Yep, yep. You know, you know, like I was talking about earlier, you know, there's a lot of um, just, you know, guys overcomplicating things. You know, it's really, you know, when you play a team like that, you're you're thinking, okay, these guys, conference champs last year, you know, you know, really powerful team, fast defense, strong guys, uh, and really just being able to block that out and, you know, focus on your job. Uh, and that's something that, you know, guys, you know, even myself, struggled with in this past game and so I think uh you know we're really blessed just to have coaches that you know really hold us accountable when we're watching that film and to say you know this this isn't going to work you know if we want to be a successful football team can't can't perform like this and so that was just something that we saw against UTSA and something that we're really going to work to fix this week and just focus on going one and no against North Texas. <laughs> What would it mean to win? Yeah, so, you know, obviously just from the past, you know, the season right now is, you know, something that we really take pride in, you know, just the lack of success that we had compared to now, you know, it's really special. And it's a, it's a testament to our team and to our coaches and to everybody in the building, you know, how far this program has come and how far we're going we're gonna to continue to go. And so with that six win, you know, being bowl eligible, you know, that's something that's awesome. And that's something that, you know, we've really set a goal for, you know, I mean, going back a couple of years now, something that we wanted for this program. And so to have that win, you know, it's, it's, it's really, I'm at a loss for words thinking about it. You know, it's, we've come so far and it's uh, a great team that really is capable of doing it. And so, you know, that's, that's our focus this week is, you know, North Texas getting that win, being bowl eligible, and it'd be an amazing win to say the least. And then the possibility of uh, another quarterback uh, under center. Uh, again, I've lost track of how many quarterbacks you have this point in your direct career, but what can you tell me uh, about, about AJ and kind of what he brings to the table, what you've seen of the practice? Of yeah, I think, uh, again, you know, Bloom hit on the head. You know, he's a confident kid, and that's what we love about him. You know, he's he's young. You know, he's not always going to, you know, make the right decision, have his eyes in the right place, but uh, just to go in there, play with that confidence and be able to, you know, do what he can to the best of his ability um, is really special. I think it's a testament to the older guys in that room, you know, Wiley, TJ, even if they're dealing with injuries, you know, they're helping him out, you know, helping those young guys out, helping them. So whenever they're, t whenever their number's called, you know, they're ready to go and they feel comfortable, you know, going in and performing. Does it kind of change anything from how you approach the week or you're in the game? Uh, if you got a guy first start versus a guy like Wiley or TJ in play? I don't, I don't think it changes uh, for me much. You know, it's it's really, you know, just putting together that same, you know, amazing preparation that we can get uh, uh, as far as tight ends and as far as in our whole room, you know, watching that film, looking at their defense, you know, what can we do to help our team? Um, you know, it's really we trust every every guy in that quarterback room, you know, no matter who it is that they're going to come in, you know, do their uh, job to the best of their ability. And so it's just really up to us to prepare in our own way and to prepare as tight ends, you know, to help the offense and do what we can to help win the game.